it's time for another Proxmox video. So let's focus on that. And then we got some Intune stuff to learn about. My book finally got delivered. So I'm gonna be, gonna be trying some new content. That is for the future. What is Greylog? Greylog is an open source log aggregation platform. Basically, it's a great way to ship all your logs to, and then go back later and review and figure out why stuff is not working. All right, sounds pretty cool. What's even cooler is the actual interface itself. Let me get my working instance pulled up. So this is my current gray log instance and nothing, nothing too crazy here. Like when you get logged into the web interface, you'll see gray log inputs. The main thing I want to focus on is inputs and streams. If we go to streams, default stream, we got our default stream pulled up here in gray log. And let's investigate why this tool is so cool. So right now we're getting logs from all our servers. What we can do is get a live update of logs every second. And then let's say we wanted to troubleshoot issues with all our Proxmox servers. We could do source PVE star. And now we're seeing logs from all our Proxmox hosts. You notice the source changing here over the past five minutes. Let's say we wanted to expand that out and over the past eight hours, we get a lot more logs in here. Let's say we wanted to zoom in over a specific time period. And notice how we can just kind of zoom in. As you can see what we get. It's a very convenient way for you to get logs from multiple servers all at the same time. This makes troubleshooting issues very convenient. You can be like, well, my Proxmox host just went down. What happened? You can come on here and be like, PV Thinker had some issues with its disks. You can also ship non Proxmox based logs. I ship both my virtual machine and container logs, as well as my NAS logs to this. So let's do SP1, it's my NAS. So you can see I don't have any logs from the NAS for the past eight hours. What if I expand out to the past day? Now I do have some log results, check some stuff out. So you can see yesterday at about, this is 10 PM, right? I sent a test message to myself from my NAS just to verify that syslog was working with it. So again, I had this, normally this is one of those services I spit up inside of my home lab as I build it out. Not one of the first ones, but eventually I always get around to spinning up gray log just because it makes troubleshooting issues that convenient. Another cool thing you can do, I have a guac server in here. So let's say I want to look at logs from the guacamole server. We can search from the past day. As you can see, it gives you the logs. We can pull out the logs. It shows us the uh, message, priority level, process ID, timestamp. All the stuff you would normally need for you to troubleshoot a complicated issue is right there. So let's go ahead and continue here. Proxmox, how to install Greylog. Step one would be to choose your OS. In our case, we'll be using a classic Debian 12. So what you want to do is go to your storage, go to templates, and we're going to be running this inside of an LXC container because it's going to save us some resource overhead versus a virtual machine. Greylog actually is one of those services that takes a lot. I think the recommended minimum specs is four cores and eight gigs of RAM. So it's, it's resource hungry. And the more performant you want to be, the more resources you're probably going to want to give it. So we've got our template downloaded and we'll just create a container. We'll call this one gray log. Give it a password like normal. Give it a password like normal. Choose ABN 12. You want to give this 32 gigs of RAM for its storage. Oh, let's see. Actually need some more storage. Give me a moment here.
From there, we can then create our Linux container. So we'll do test dot local. And it's DNS address is going to be 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. After that, we create the container. Let's give this a second or two to spin up. There's some pre-staging work we're gonna to have to do in order to get MongoDB installed. First we'll have to first we'll have to set the time zone. We can do that with time date, CTL, set time zone, America, New York. Now we wanna do a quick app get update and app get upgrade. And we just let that run for a few seconds. So we have everything updated, move on to the next step. We have to install some utilities to get MongoDB installed. So we run a quick app, get install GNUPG curl. Let's just run that command right there. We'll let that run again. I'm gonna paste all these commands in the bottom of the YouTube video. After that, we're gonna to have to install, or we're gonna to have to use curl to download the MongoDB key rings. Then we're gonna install the MongoDB repository. Then we're gonna run an app get update. Then we can run an app get install MongoDB. And then the last step we're going to do is to modify the MongoDB config and then enable the service. So we'll give this a few minutes to run and get itself installed. So MongoDB is now installed. And then what we can do is a quick nano Etsy Mongo D.com. And basically what you want to do is scroll here, comment this line out replace it with bind IP all 0 .0 .0 .0. Oh. and set it to bind IP all true and from there we just have to enable the service so we can do a system CTL daemon reload System CTL enable MongoD. System CTL start MongoD. There we go. We can verify if MongoD is working with a system CTL status MongoD. And there we go. Step three is to install the gray log data node. So let's get that knocked out. And let's move on to step three, which is actually get the gray log data node installed. So that process is also straightforward and commands for that will be at the bottom of the description in this video. First thing we have to do is get the gray log package. I'll pull this URL from the gray log wiki, wiki. and it's either going to be down here or you can Google search the gray log install instructions and click the correct instruction for whatever operating system you're installing this on. We use wget and we pull the package directly to our system. We then use the package to install it. We then run an app get update. We'll let it run for a few minutes. And from there, all we have to do is do an app get. From there, all we have to do is an apt get install gray log. It's gonna prompt us. We just give it a few minutes. All right, 
it's gonna take a couple of minutes for it to download Graylog and get it installed. So we'll be we'll be back when it's completed. So it's done installing. Conveniently, the so another thing we have to do is confirm the value of our via max count setting. All right. How do we get that? Well, thankfully, the installer for Graylog gives us this right here. So we just copy and paste. And if it's already set, it's not going to change this value. As you can see, the VM max count is already set to that. So we can proceed to the next step. We can then enable with a system CTL enable gray log data node. So we just enabled the system CTL service for gray log data node. Then we just started. And then we can check the status of it to confirm that it's running. And there we go. The next step is to install gray log. Installing Graylog server straightforward. We just do an app, an apt get. We just do an apt get install. That's why Graylog server. We'll give that a few minutes for it to do its thing. After that, we enable the Graylog service. You can just copy and paste these two commands here. But you don't want to go ahead and start it. You have to edit the config file first. So then we do a nano Etsy gray log server server.com. We scroll down and notice we need to enter this password secret value. So what you want to do is go back into our gray log data node file and you want to copy this password secret value. And in order for your data node to talk with the gray log front end, these password secret values have to be the same. So you hit a quick control X after you've copied it. You then go back to the gray log server config file and you'll make sure password secret is set to the same value. Now, technically you can set a separate root SHA password. I don't have to do that. I just go back to the data node config file one more time. If you are running this in production, I would highly advise that you do set a different root password, but you just copy that. You go back to Greylock server config file and you paste. And there you go. There's one more field you have to edit inside the Greylock config file. So there is one more field we're going to have to edit, and that is HTTP bind address. So you just go into gray log. Um, so there is one more field we're going to have to edit, and that is the HTTP bind address. So if you scroll down, you'll notice that's it right here. And you want to set this to 0000, zero, zero, zero and just save that. After that, we have to edit a, another config, but this is for the default gray log config. So we do etc default gray log server. And you want to update the heap size for Java garbage collection to half your system RAM. And you want to set it on both these fields right here. After that, we can do a system CTL start gray log server. And let's check the status of it. And there we go. So now when we go to gray log, well, let's get the IP address of this container. So this server is at 1106. So we're going to go to 192.168.1106-9000. And we'll need a admin and password for this. Our admin is admin. But to get our password, we'll have to look at the log file of our gray log server. So we'll do tail dash var log gray log server server dot log. You'll see the password listed right here in the output of the log message. And you click sign in. And that'll let you get through the pre flight sign in for Gray Log. So we'll now need to configure Gray Log with its self signed cert. So we'll create a CA. Set the lifetime of this to one year. Create the policy. Provision the certificate. And that's it. After that, your admin account and the web interface will be ready. As you can see, it gives us the IP that Gray Log is going to be hosted on. So just let this run for a second or two. Okay. 
So once you're done, you'll be taken to the gray log login interface. You can go ahead and log in like so. You can log in with admin and the password you configured while you are setting this up. After that, you go to system inputs. After that, you go to system inputs. And we're going to select a syslog input. In our case, we're going to do syslog UDP, launch new input. We're going to set the bind address to any, call this our syslog. Port is 5140 and launch input. And that's all you need to configure a gray log input. We're going to go to my already running gray log instance to show you what things look like once it's running. So let's go over here. As you can see, I have a gray log instance that monitors all my hosts, right? And I can show events from the past five minutes and update this every couple seconds. You can see logs are flowing in pretty steadily here, right? And it shows you different logs from my various servers. And that's it. That is how you install gray log and create your first input. If you enjoy this content, please go ahead and hit subscribe. Um, otherwise, hope you have a great day.